Hey everyone, and welcome back to Suited Aces Poker, where every week we review hundreds of hands from poker vloggers across YouTube and bring you 10 of the best. This week, we've got flopped controversy, we've got multiple choice questions, and we've got a good reminder to always think about your body language. So without further ado, let's make a start. Kicking things off at number 10 is Mariano playing in a 2-5 game at the new Resorts World in Las Vegas. And there's some controversy on the flop in this one. Does Mariano do the right thing here? Let us know in the comments. A few hands later, I put on the double straddle to 20. Everyone folds around until the $10 straddler makes it 100. Now, let me give you guys a quick backstory about this player. He had just introduced himself to me and explained that this was a big game for him, but he wanted the chance to play with myself and Ethan. It seems like he doesn't play a ton of poker, good for him, but I couldn't help but feel partially responsible for him not losing the $200 that he sat with. So when he makes it 100 and I look down at pocket threes, I happily make the call expecting to lose this pot almost every time. Unfortunately, disaster strikes when the flop comes 7-6-3, and I just couldn't bring myself to take his remaining 100. I flopped the set. I flopped the set, I'm telling you right now, and I'm not lying. Check. Check. Thank you. You got it. Thank that you. was a fridge. That, that was a, that was a polite. That was <laughs> polite. Very polite so poker player. Yeah. So yeah, we crack our friends' pocket kings, but minimize the blood loss. In general, I don't really do stuff like that. But given that it was a meetup game and a friendly environment, it felt like the right thing to do. I don't know. Maybe some of you guys won't like it, but whatever. We're talking about a hundred bucks. Lighten up. At number 9 this week, Rob Rickerman is playing in a 2-5 game at the Lodge in Austin. And we really feel for you, Rob. We've all made mistakes like this. 15 minutes later, I pick up Queen Jack of Spades in the hijack. Early position raises to 20. I call and player on my left I haven't seen much from puts in the 3-bet to 110. He has over 4k in his stack. Lady in the 1 seat cold calls the 110. Original uh, razor folds, and it's back to me. We are deep, so I make the call um, in position here to close the action. Three ways to a flop of queen, 10, 8 with one spade. We have a uh, top pair, gut shot, and backdoor flush draw. First player checks. I check to the aggressor, and he checks back. So I'm already ruling out sets from him since he's not going to let anyone draw to straight for free. He could be checking hands back like ace, king, aces, kings, or possibly pocket nines. So we go to a turn card, which is a four of spades. Beautiful card as we pick up a flush draw now. The first player fires out a over bet, 450, which I did not want to see. So action is to me. She has about 500 behind. I think I'm probably beat, but have a ton of outs now. I think I should actually fold this hand because I'm not really getting the right price. But in the moment, I make the call and assume there's no way the next player can make an over call. But to my surprise, after some tanking, he joins in the action and cold calls 450. So now I'm thinking a spade might be a bad card for us. Pot is huge now, and I'm looking for some help on the river. A nine would be ideal. It's not, though. The river brings a jack of clubs, giving us two pair, but puts that one card straight on board, which I'm kind of not seeing at the moment. I'm only thinking about ace-king. First player slows down and checks now. So I'm thinking she might just have king-queen or ace-queen. I can beat both of those, but I'm not really sure what the player on my left has. He might have just missed an ace-high flush draw. I check to him, and he bets 950. Oh boy, I can tell the lady in the one seat doesn't want to call, but I th she feels committed, puts the rest of her chips in, and it's back to me. I'm pretty sure I have her beat, but not sure where he's at. I don't know why I don't think very long before making a call here, because I'm kind of only thinking, does he have ace-king of spades, or did he miss a flush draw? But it's really tough for him to be bluffing into two people, especially the player one who has half of her chips in. So I don't know why I make a pretty bad call, probably the worst call of the vlog so far. He shows ace nine of spades, which makes total sense now. Um, so we didn't want to see a spade at all, but kind of forgot about the one card straight and uh, made a bad call there. And that puts us in the hole a couple thousand now. At number eight, 
Lexo is playing in a 5-5 game at the Texas Card House in Dallas. And in this hand, it's kind of like being back in school. So is it A or B or C or all of the above? First, starting out here, there is a massive straddle on. The game is 5, 5, 10, 25 with a $50 straddle. Folds to me. I have ace, queen, and the cutoff. I make it $150, and only the straddler makes the call. The player in the $50 straddle is named Galoo. He is a regular on this Texas Card House live stream. I played a ton with him the last couple months, and I do know that he is not afraid to mix it up and put in some big bluffs. So when the flop comes out ace, queen, high, we flop top two pair on a very dry board. When he checks, I decide to check this one back. My thoughts at the time is that I completely smash this board, so I want to give him some rope to potentially bluff on the turn if he senses weakness on the flop, which is exactly what happens. On the turn card, a deuce, he decides to lead out for a pretty big sizing here, $250. I could put in a raise, but there's really not many bad river cards I'm looking to see. Maybe a 10 or a jack bringing in a straight, but I want to keep all of his bluffs in there, so I just make the call. We're going to the last card, which is... A 10 of clubs. This is one of those cards we weren't really looking to see. It does bring in King Jack for a straight, which is a hand that he could have bet with on the turn as a semi bluff, and now he got there to beat us. However, this card could improve him to two pair like Ace 10, Queen 10, 10 Deuce, 10 3. So if he bets here, I am most likely going to be raising for value. However, he thinks for a while and decides to check. With the action back over on me, I want to play a little game here. I want to see what you guys would do on the river. If you played the hand like me, would you A, bet $300? Would you B, bet $600? Or would you C, bet 2x to pot $1,600? I want to hear down in the comments below, what sizing would you use on the river here? Pause the video and put your answer in the comments below. I decided to go with a $600 bet here. I'm really just trying to get called by a queen x hand or potentially a 10x hand like jack 10 or king 10. By checking back on the flop, I'm hoping that Galoo will think that I'm bluffing here because I would most likely bet my strong hands on the flop. He goes into the tank for a while and it looks like our check back gets us paid. He puts in the chips, we show the top two pair, and it is good to take down our first pot here, playing at Texas Card House on the live stream. Number seven this week, and Frankie of the Next Gen Boys is playing in a 1-3 game also at the Texas Card House over in Dallas. And is anybody finding a call on the turn here? Things won't be as easy this hand. I look down at pocket queens and the button with 700 in my stack. We've seen under the gun, a plus one, and a cut off the limp. I put in a race to $17, and then the small blind, he puts in a three bet to $65. Folds back to me. Think about four betting me, but he has me covered. Since he's the tightest guy at the table, I don't think he's going to call me with words besides ace king. Not trying to flip for all this money. I make the call in position with a very strong hand. Flop comes, king 8-4 all hearts. Small bind bets $80, and we do not like that king out there, but we do have the queen of hearts, definitely worth at least one more call. That's what I do, I put in the call for 80, hand off to a turn card, which is the seven of clubs. We're hoping for a check, but a check is not what happens. Instead, the small one player jams it all in for around $560. Now, this is a very tough decision, but he has 2x potted it. I feel like he can be doing this with ace king with no hearts, aces no hearts, those type of hands that we're dominated by, and although I do have the queen with the queen of hearts, this is a tricky spot. I think about it for a long time. Comment below what you guys would do here. Would you call off with the flush draw behind? With second pair, I do this time decide to fold versus a specific player. And he flips over ace queen with the ace of hearts as a bluff. So we get bluffed off. A pretty good hand. A four bet would have worked great. Let me know how I play that hand below. But we don't lose all of it. We lose about 160. Number six this week. And your boy Ethan, Rampage Poker, is playing in a 2-5 game at the Lodge in Austin. And sometimes it just feels like you can't lose. But only sometimes. For one of the last interesting hands of the night, I pick up kings once again, time to redeem myself. I'm in early position and there is an under the gun limp. I decide to raise it up to $50 and this $50 bet scares no one. Cut off, button, and under the gun player all call. So we're going four ways to a flop of, can you believe it? King Jack 5 rainbow once again. What? The exact same flop with top sets, kind of ridiculous and action checks to me. Like I said, for those same exact reasons as to why I checked the flop in the last hand, I'm gonna check this one as well. We're multi-way, so it, I should probably bet with as strong of a hand as this, 
but maybe we can get someone to catch up. Action checks around, and we're off to a turn, which comes the four of diamonds. So this is a card that brings in a few more draws on board, and action checks to me once again. Definitely no more checking with top set. I decide to throw $200 into the middle, and I only get the only one player to make the call. Surprising to see this development, but we're off to a river, and the river seems like overkill. It's the king of diamonds. Found a way to be into quads, and now at least there's no way that we can lose with quads now with the nuts. For a third time, this under the gun player checks, and now it's just a decision on sizing as to how much I want to bet, and I'm stuck between betting small or big. Betting big here, I don't think this accomplishes a whole lot, as this King of Diamonds does complete some flushers that might want to raise for value. Anyways, I try to take a stab and bet out $125. I would love to induce a raise if possible, as, you know, facing a check raise with the nuts is going to be pretty nice. Anyways, though, this player thinks about it for a long time, and in the middle of his tank, he ends up saying he can't raise anymore because he took too long. So that kind of crushes my dreams of any opportunity of getting more money in the middle. He ends up making the call, though, after that, and I'm happy to take the pot to end the night with quads. Number five this week, and Brad Owen is playing in a 5-10 game at the club he partly owns down in Austin, Texas. And is this an easier call than it looks? Two hours in, we still haven't won a significant pot. The straddle's on to 100. I anticipated a big game, but this is wildly bigger than I thought with the $100 straddle on a huge percentage of the time. Big Tony open limbs from middle position with ace-10 offsuit, a real-life friend, but session nemesis Cedric is on the button with 5-4 of hearts. He recently bluffed away all the Bradley dollars that he's acquired and is actually stuck for the session when he raises it to 525. He actually has about 5,700 in his stack behind that. I've got Ace King offsuit in the big blind. I jam for about 6,200 effective. With the $100 straddle on, that's only 62 big blinds. My image is one of a loser because that's all that I've done so far today. That should allow me to get called much lighter. We saw Doug 4-bet jam for 10k effective earlier with 7-deuce. I already tried to get a bluff through with 7-deuce post-flop, so in my opponent's minds, that should be a hand that I might potentially make this play with as well. If everyone folds, I won't be too disappointed either since a hand like 5-4 hearts does pretty well against Ace-King. I expect to see the players behind me all let their cards go, except I can't ever seem to get through anyone. Mixon has Ace King of Diamonds right next to me. He's tanking and contemplating what to do. What I thought was a jam for what would end up being 6,200 effective could end up being a jam for nearly 12,000 effective. I can't catch much of a break today. As Mixon is contemplating what to do, I already know that he has at least Ace King, if not Aces or Kings. He rejams. You can see me smiling partly in disbelief and partly to mask anxiety and pain that I'm feeling. It folds back to Seti, who I imagine is going to snap fold 5-4 suited. His hand isn't actually doing too poorly in this very, very specific scenario up against two ace kings, and we saw that Big Tony folded an ace already. With these exact hands, and not knowing what the other players folded, Seti has by far the most equity. If either Mixin or I had a pocket pair, that changes things significantly, and Seti would be getting crushed. For some reason, Seti doesn't snap fold. He instead basically snap calls. It's insane. No one on the planet does that. This is Texas, Texas Hold'em, and he miraculously gets it in great. It's about a 30k pot total, and I'm gonna have to get extremely lucky to win outright. A good chunk of the time, I'll be chopping it with Mixin. Even if Seti wins the main pot for 17 or 18,000, there's gonna be a side pot of over 10,000 between me and Mixin, so I really don't wanna see diamonds. I'm not optimistic about this at all. The way that things have been going today, I feel like I'm cursed. You see my reaction here when I see what Seti called me with. When he folds pocket jacks to Doug preflop, but calls me down in every other spot, it's clear that he's coming for me. That's okay when I can occasionally win hands, but everything has been going the other way today. I just hope that I can at least chop this. The flop comes 10-6 deuce rainbow. I'm immediately drawing dead to a chop since I won't be able to hit a flush. At least there's no five or four out there. Said he has a gutter to the straight though. The turn is of course, three ball. Three no waiting around, Seti drills the straight to win the main pot. I chop the side pot in what is the single dumbest hand I've ever played. Losing this to Seti is a $9,000 swing for me. Seti gets a triple up with his short stack. He's a great guy to have in the game and a great guy to have on stream. But currently, I'm not thrilled with him. 
I don't know how he does it, but he makes the nuts to completely devastate me and put me in a $24,000 hole. At four, Ashley Sleeth is playing in a 1600 No Limit Hold'em tournament at the Win in Vegas. And I don't know, do we believe her opponent with her blocker? So let's keep the premiums coming. The next time I'm in the big blind, I look down at East Queen offsuit. The low jack in this hand raises up to 1100 and I make the call from the big blind. Sometimes I'll three bet, sometimes I'll call. I chose to just call this time. The flop comes down at queen nine deuce, two hearts. Check it over to the pre-flop raiser and he continues for a tiny bet of 700. East queen, top pair, top kicker. I'm gonna raise this up and try to get some more money in the pot now. So I make it 2,500 to go. He doesn't take too long before making the call. Starting to build a big pot, the turn comes a deuce of spades. Pretty innocuous turn card. I continue trying to get value from worst queen X and any draws that he might have. I bet 5,000 and he makes the call once again. The river is the beautiful queen of spades. So just in case we weren't ahead yet, now we river a full house. The only problem with this card is it's really hard to get value, <laughs> but I go for it. I had set up this sizing so I could jam all in on the river comfortably. He had about 12K remaining, so that's what I do. I go all in for his remaining 12,000. He doesn't take too long before finally folding. A couple hands later, he couldn't take it anymore and asked me, oh, did you have the queen there? And I told him I did, and he claimed to have aces and to have hated that river. So unlucky for him, but we are on a roll. Top three for week 10, and at number three, it's Ethan again, Rampage Poker, this time in a 5-10 game at the Lodge in Austin, Texas. And what else could we do on the river here? Ugh. Pick up jacks now in the low jack. There's a DQ straddle to $115, so once again, playing some pretty high stakes. The preliminary right calls the 115, and it's time to bump it up. I raise it up to $500, action folds around to DQ, and he's always in here to gamble, makes the call, and we're going to a flop of king nine six two spades. He checks it over to me, and with the card over my pair, certainly could bet, but I decided to check this one back as DQ could certainly be happy to bluff with some holdings. The turn is the five of spades, not the most ideal card in the world, and even worse, DQ does oblige with a bet of $700. As played with jacks right now, I don't think I can fold. It'd be really nice to have a spade in my hand, but I don't. So, end of the day, hoping to just brick out on the spades. The river is the queen of spades. Ah, that's pretty gross. Can't do much now with four to a flush out there. And he sizes up to around $1,400, I think. Not sure what it is because I ended up just snap folding as I'm never even going to think about calling that bet. And he shows us ace six of clubs for the bluff. Sick bluff by DQ. Gotta give credit where credit's due. Nice hand, man. Number two, and at the Shark Tank Poker Club in Columbus, Ohio, playing in a 2-5 game is Yale Greenfield. And when plan A fails, but plan B turns out to be even better. Buckle up for this one. It's a one-off action inducing hand so what we've got here is we've got five blinds two five ten someone convinces trish to put on the twenty dollar blind and once she does that the guy to her left mike puts on a forty dollar blind raise so he will not have an option here the button calls 40 the two dollar blind completes big blind's gonna fold and we've got Live King's absolute favorite hand, Ace King offsuit. So we go upstairs and make it look like $210. Trish puts in the call. I've played a fair bit with Trish. I think this is a pretty strong hand from her. All in. And the $40 blind goes all in for $1,155. What is it, like 1000 this guy had been playing a lot of hands, but certainly I would expect that this is going to be a good hand. The other two people get out of the way, and now it's back on me. And really, I don't think this is a tough decision at all. Ace-King is simply too strong in this scenario. I go all in for my 2277 total. While Trish is contemplating her options facing our all-in, we recently made a push past 2,000 subscribers, and we're headed towards 3,000. So please hit that subscribe button. 
I think when she's in the tank here, she's got hands like nines, tens, jacks, maybe sometimes ace queen, ace jack suited, hands like that. I'm really hoping she folds here. And Trish does fold. Oh, whatever you want to do. Oh, I don't care. One time? One time. He wants to go once, and that's what we're going to do. Ah, the jack. Nice hand. And he shows queen jack off. So a little bit of a maniacal play, which could have benefited us, but instead, the ace king goes down in flames. And I really think, look, this is a five blind hand. Obviously, our get in for a little under 30 big blinds is completely standard. But in this case, the poker gods had other plans for us, and our own meetup game continues to not go well. And at number one this week, week 10, in March 2022, Ashley Sleaf. We're back with her at the Win in Vegas. She is still playing in that $1,600 tournament. And in this hand, an excellent reminder that it's a good idea to keep a check on your body language. So we look down at Pocket Kings once again. I'm not kidding. This is all before dinner break. We're just running so hot. I open it up to 2200 under the gun one and hijack, button, and big blind all come along. Great. So the flop is queen nine five, two spades. Big blind checks. I think I'm gonna check this a lot four ways. So that's what I do here. I check it. It checks all the way around to the button and you can kind of see his body language in this footage. You see his hands, they grabbed his stack right away after I checked the flop. As soon as it checks to him, he immediately throws out 10K into a pot of around 12, five, something like that. I don't know, it looks pretty strong to me, but huge in a four way pot. And he, it looks like he knew he was gonna bet as soon as I checked. Maybe reading a little too much into that, but thought he was pretty strong. Big blind gets out of the way and I only have 70K to start this hand. So with this 10K bet, I want to try to put as much money in the middle right now against all of his draws and his best queen X. So I am going to elect to raise, but I wanna make it a size where it looks like I could potentially fold if he jams all in. We had similar stack sizes. So if he jams all in, I don't wanna have made it like 35 or something <laughs> so that it's obvious that I'm committed. So I ended up on a size of 25. 000. I raise the 25K and it folds back to him and you can see his hands in the footage. He immediately looks dejected. He does not look nearly as confident. It's like a bittersweet situation. We're happy that he didn't just have a set or something and we're gonna get coolered. But at the same time, it looks like he's just gonna fold as soon as he takes this posture. But then he grabs his chip sack again, starts shuffling around playing with his chips and I thought he was gonna go all in but he eventually lays it down and we do win a sizable pot with Kings. Stack is continuing to build. It's going great. Day one B, happy to be here. An excellent reminder from Ashley there. I'm certainly gonna be keeping an eye on my body language the next time I'm playing live. So that's it for this week, folks. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, let us know in the comments. If you didn't, let us know in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you again next week with another 10 of the best. Until then, good luck of the felt.